Good afternoon, and uh, we're going to read from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, in this session. And uh, we've been talking about, of course, the fact is that uh, Yahuwah has made salvation unto the ends of the earth. Um, and by the way, you'll find that in prophesied by Yahuwah himself in Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 45. Uh, but he, he prophesied that he was... Uh, that all the ends of the earth were to look to him for salvation. And of course, if you if you're reading from an English translation, you won't see you won't see Yahuwah's name mentioned there, but you'll see the, the word that's been substituted for that Lord. But uh, of course, if you've been listening to my teachings in, in any length of time, you understand that that's a substitution for the Creator's name, Yahuwah. But he said in, in, in this particular chapter, he said, Look unto me, all ye, all ye ends of the earth, and be saved. Of course, he was talking not just to the nation of Yasharel, but he was talking to all mankind, prophesying that the Creator would be our Savior, our salvation. And, uh, of course, Yahushua is the manifestation of the Father, come in the flesh to fulfill prophecy by Yahuwah himself, declaring that he was our Savior. And of course, Yahushua himself declared in John, in the Gospel of John, chapter five, verse forty-three. He said, "I am come in my Father's name," and 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 he said, "I am come in my Father's name." And uh, he also declared that uh, all the works that he did, the healing of the sick, the raising the dead, the casting out the demons, and so forth, he did them all in the name of his Father. And uh, so, but in Galatians chapter three. Uh, we won't have time to go through this whole chapter, but boy, it's so rich here. If I would encourage you to actually read through the whole, the whole book of Galatians, but chapter three in particular. Um, but Paul writes here, starting at verse one, he says, "O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yahushua Hamashiach has been evidently uh, set before you, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you." Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the Torah or by the hearing of faith? Are, are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Now, the purpose of this letter was written um, to believers who had, who had received the, the Mashiach, and um, some, of course, some being Jews and some being Gentiles. Um, the Jews of that were that had received the Mashiach, some of them were trying to put the the Gentiles, uh, telling them they had to keep the works of the Torah in order to be saved, and um, and then of course um, the the Yahudim themselves began to put themselves under the Torah again by by adhering to the strict points of the Torah, and uh, so really what they were doing is they were. Paul making a reference to this, he asked them a question. He said, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the Torah or by the hearing of faith? In other words, how did you receive salvation? How did you receive the Mashiach? How did you receive him? Was it by you keeping the works of the Torah? For we know that the, the, for, uh, for by the works of the Torah shall no flesh be justified. Now, I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking against the Torah. The Torah is good. The law is good and given for, for the purpose of bringing man to the realization of his inability to keep it and also to, to, to point him to the Messiah, to the Mashiach, to, so that he would, it would humble him, it would bring him to a point of desperation, realizing that he was what the Scripture says and what Yahuwah declared about man, that he was a sinner and that he needed a Savior. You know, that's one thing, a, a problem with a lot of people is that they're they're lost or they're not saved simply because they don't believe they're lost. <laughs> they don't believe they're a sinner. You know, you have to acknowledge and recognize that you're a sinner in need of a Savior before you can really get to the point of calling upon the Savior that's been sent. And so, you know, that's what Paul is making reference to here. He said, you know, uh, he's trying to point out to them the error of their way because they were trying to go back under the Torah and declare that, you know, that they uh, were justified by keeping the works of the Torah. And, of course, he's pointing out to them that, uh, you know, this is not, not correct. He said that 
that the Torah was used and its purpose is to bring mankind to the realization of his need for a savior. And for you, for the people out there that think that they keep the Torah, I, I really sort of chuckle when I see some of the comments that these people make. And uh, because the fact is, they may think they keep the Torah, but in reality, they're not. Because there's no way, the, the works of the Torah are not just keeping the Ten Commandments, as I've pointed out many times on my teaching, uh, that it's much more involved in that. It's, uh, you know, Yahushua himself, I mean, the scripture says in the book of Deuteronomy, that, uh, you know, you're to love your neighbor as yourself. And it also declares that if you, um, if you break one point or one, one commandment of the Torah, you're guilty of all of it. <laughs> so you might, you know, and of course there's 600, I believe 613 commandments uh, listed throughout the Tanakh as far as uh, things that, uh, not only the, the Ten Commandments included that, but other things that, that were required of the, of the, of, in the Torah. And um, so the reality is, uh, as much as you might take pride in the fact that you think you keep the Torah, in reality, you don't. In reality, you break it all the time. You probably break it every day because you don't, you don't walk in love towards your neighbor. You don't, you, you don't, you don't treat your neighbor as yourself. You don't, you know, th those kind of things that people, uh, you know, break repeatedly, you know. But then they want to take credit because they keep the Shabbat, Shabbat and they, they think that, you know, that in itself has made them justified before Yahuwah, which is not true. Really, in fact, the Shabbat, keeping Shabbat is all based upon the fact is that we enter into Shabbat by trusting and believing the word of Yahuwah, that he has justified us, not by our own works, but by the sacrifice of the Mashiach that was paid the price for our salvation. And that's the, the rest that we enter into. That's the Shabbat that we enter into is that we believe. Of course, this is all uh, uh, made it, uh, brought out in, in Hebrews, in the, in the epistle of Hebrews chapter 4, where the writer of the book of Hebrews said, for we which have believed do enter into, of course your English translation says rest, but it's talking about Shabbat. We enter into Shabbat. How? By believing the word of Yahuwah. <laughs> See, that's really keeping the Sabbath, is, is believing the word of Yahuwah, trusting in his promises, trusting in, in what he has declared about salvation, and not what you think is. Because, you know, there, the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So people who are going about trying to establish their own righteousness, people that are going about following the Torah without the Mashiach, without the Messiah, without receiving him as their salvation, without trusting in the fact that he has paid the price for their sins, and that if they would believe in him and put their faith and trust in him, then that's the labor that we're called to labor in. But, but believing that is, the, is entering into our rest. And Yahuwah declared, just as the children of Yasharel failed to enter the promised land, as in the book of Numbers, when he sent out the ten spies, and Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report, and the others came back with a, a negative report, and Yahuwah declared that they, those that did not believe what he said would never enter into his Shabbat or to his rest. And it's the same, same example as far as those that were, believe the, the, the word of Yahuwah, believe that Yahushua HaMashiach is, is their Savior, and that if they put their faith and trust in him, that Yahuwah will count them as righteous. And if you believe that, you'll enter into the rest of or that Yahuwah has provided, or to the, enter into Shabbat, into a, the rest that he has provided for us to enter into. <laughs> that's, why, that's why the gospel or the good news is so good to know is that, that uh, he's not holding against us uh, our sins if you'll put your faith and trust in him. You know, that's what David said in the book of uh, Psalms. He said, blessed is the man unto whom Yahuwah will not impute sin. What that means is that word impute means that he won't hold it to your account. Because in reality, even after you're saved and born again, we all still sin. But Yahuwah has promised to show us mercy. And um, it doesn't mean that we just go about and do whatever we want to do. No, it's the fact is that we realize that we love him now. The reason we do good works, the reason we keep the commandments and so forth is because we love him. Not because that if, if we that we're we're so concerned that if we miss one that we're going to die and go to hell. 
That's not the purpose of us walking now, uh, keeping the commandments. It's a purpose that we love him and we do it as an attitude of gratitude. Well, again, thank you for this afternoon, for you joining me this afternoon, and we'll pick this up on uh, our next time together. Again, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please also like the, the videos if you do, and uh, share these with others as well. Until next time, shalom.